Welcome back to our IB Chemistry video series. This is the second video in IB Chemistry Topic 11, Measurements and Data Processing, where we will be looking at the Index of Hydrogen Deficiency and Mass Spectrometry. This topic of IB Chemistry covers three main imaging techniques used to determine the structure of organic compounds, mass spectrometry, infrared spectroscopy, and nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy, NMR. Before covering how each can reveal the structure of an organic compound, we must first outline a rule to predict the bonding within such species. This rule is known as the index of hydrogen deficiency, or degree of unsaturation. It is a formula which outputs a number reflecting the number of double bonds or rings within an organic species. It is defined as 2n plus 2 minus h divided by 2, where n is the number of carbons and h the number of hydrogens. When using the formula, each halogen adds 1 to the hydrogen number, each nitrogen subtracts 1, and oxygens are ignored. Let's calculate the IHD for some examples to put this into context. C8H8, C5H10OBR2, and C5H7OCl2M. Within C8H8, there are 8 carbons and 8 hydrogen atoms. So, substituting our value of N as 8 and H as 8, and simplifying, we get an IHD of 5. This signifies that the molecule has five double bonds, five rings, or a combination of both totaling to five. So, a possible structure would be as follows. Within C5H10OBR2, there are five carbon and ten hydrogen atoms. However, there are an additional two halogens, and so we substitute in a value of N as five and H as twelve. Simplifying, we would get an IHD of zero, signifying that the molecule has no double bonds or rings. Thus, a possible structure would be as follows. Within C5H7OCl2N, there are 5 carbon and 7 hydrogen atoms. However, there are an additional 2 halogens and 1 nitrogen, and so we substitute in a value of N as 5 and H as 8. Simplifying, we would get an IHD of 2, signifying that the molecule has 2 double bonds or rings, or 1 of each. Thus, a possible structure would be as follows. Whilst you can now identify how many double bonds or rings are present within a compound, without the chemical formula this has limited application. To identify the structure of a molecule more accurately, we can use mass spectrometry. Mass spectrometry is used to determine the relative molecular mass of a molecule and its constituent parts, revealing potential structures for a molecule. The process involves bombarding a test molecule with high energy electrons to cause fragmentation the process of splitting into multiple positively charged fragments. These fragments are then arranged by molecular mass to produce a fragmentation pattern that reflects the constituent parts of the test molecule. This can be displayed using a mass spectrum graph like so, showing relative intensity over molecular mass. Each vertical line indicates a positively charged fragment of the molecule, and the gaps between lines indicate the parts of the molecule lost to form these residual fragments. It is crucial that you understand that the most prominent right-hand line on the graph indicates the molecular mass of the whole compound before any fragmentation occurs. It is termed the molecular ion M plus peak and represents the removal of a single electron. There are several fragments, each with a unique molecular mass, which are found in many organic species and functional groups, making their molecular masses worth memorizing for your exam. These are CH3 with a mass of 15, OH and alcohols with a mass of 17, C2H5 or CHO with masses of 29, CH3O in methyl esters or ethers with a mass of 31, COOH in carboxylic acids with a mass of 45, and C6H5 plus in aromatic compounds with a mass of 77. Let's talk through an example graph for a known molecule butane, C4H10. First, let's draw the displayed formula for butane to give us a visual reference point. Looking at the graph, we can see the highest, rightmost peak, the M plus peak, is 58. This tells us the molecular mass of the species is 58, which is true for butane. This peak therefore represents C4H10+. There are also peaks at 43, 29 and 15. Looking at our table, and knowing butane contains no oxygen, we can see the peak at 29 would likely represent C2H5+, and at 15, CH3+. To identify the fragment giving rise to the peak at 43, we can consider the gaps between peaks. 
From the M-plus peak at 58 to 43, we have lost a mass of 15, i.e. a CH3. Therefore, the peak at 43 is represented by the overall molecule having lost a CH3 group, and so it represents C3H7+. Note, if labelling the gap, it represents CH3 and not CH3+, as only the fragments that give rise to peaks have a positive charge. Whilst unnecessary, we can see the gap from 43 to 29, and from 29 to 15, both involve the loss of a mass of 14, i.e. a CH2, further evidencing these peaks represent C2H5+, and CH3+, respectively. When interpreting mass spectrometry graphs, it is important to use both the information from peaks and gaps in this way. However, we need to revisit a small detail that can have a large implication on these graphs. You've now reached the end of the preview for this IB Science video. If you want to check out the full video, head over to our website and select a membership plan today.